An entitled flight attendant kicks me off of the plane, claiming that I wasn't actually a doctor when they called asking for one. And despite the fact that I saved a patient's life on the plane, I am removed from the plane by police presence under the false accusation that I was impersonating being a doctor, with this eventually leading to months worth of litigation as well as lawsuits. Here's what happened. So for some background to begin with, I'm a doctor. This event happened a few years ago when I was a junior doctor. I was so shiny you could use me for a shaving mirror. I also had a career before I did medicine, so I was about 30 years old when this happened. I had been a doctor for about 8 months, and I was going on a trip with an airline that has this weird obsession with putting pictures of kangaroos everywhere. And this was with my then fiancé and some of our friends going on a trip to Bali. The plane had just taken off, maybe 15 minutes in the air, when the flight crew say over the intercom the words that every doctor dreads to hear on a plane. They asked if there was a doctor on on board. After looking around and seeing that no one else was getting up, I reluctantly head forward to the crew area to introduce myself. Looking very grateful for my presence, a flight attendant shows me to where the passenger in question is sitting. I walk up to a man who looks half alive. Thankfully, he has a medic alert bracelet and is still conscious enough to tell me exactly what's going on. He has Addison's disease, which is an autoimmune disease affecting the adrenal glands, and he feels like he is having an adrenal crisis. Basically, he is in shock due to a lack of hormones that the adrenal gland secretes, which is big trouble. You can pass away in a few hours if untreated. Now, this is normally managed initially by a hydrocortisone injection, followed by several days of care in the nearest hospital. Unfortunately, he did not have the right documentation to be able to bring his auto-injector onto the plane, so instead it's in his check luggage. This is not good. So I tell the flight attendant to inform the pilot that we need to get this man to a hospital as soon as humanly possible. Another flight attendant was in the process of talking to an on-call medical advice service that airlines use for such emergencies, and the doctor on the other end agrees with my assessment. The plane turns around, heading back to the airport that we just came from. I have a conversation with the on-call service, and they were amazing people. I wish I found out the name of the organization so I could shout them out in some kind of way. A boring doctor conversation happens, I get given a plan for the patient on the plane, and honestly, I felt awesome about it. It. The aircraft had a surprisingly well stocked first aid kit on board, so I began administering fluids to my new patient while all of this is happening. As I am doing so, a woman comes up and introduces herself as a nurse, showing me her work badge. Don't ask me why she had one on the plane, I honestly have no idea. Great, the extra set of experienced hands will be useful. I ask her to start the fluids once I get a line inserted in the patient, and then recheck his vitals in a few minutes to see how he is responding. The flight attendant who initially took me to the patient, then tells me that the nurse should be able to handle it from here and that she would like me to return to my seat. Okay, that's weird. Her demeanor is a bit off, but I never noticed at the time. But there is nothing else I can do for the guy with onboard resources. We don't have the medicine he needs, and the nurse was perfectly happy to sit with him and alert me if anything goes downhill. So I go back to my seat, I have done a good job, and honestly, that's not a bad thing for such a shiny new doctor. Fast forward 20 minutes, and the plane has landed again, and we appear to have gone to an empty gate somewhere away from the main terminals. The same flight attendant comes up and asked if I could please go and speak to the paramedics at the front of the plane as they board. So I say, sure thing. So I head up to the front of the plane, where I'm met by two very serious-looking police officers. They say to me, Sir, would you mind stepping off the plane for a moment? We would like to have a chat with you. I think to myself, "Uh uh-oh, what did I do? I, of course, comply and I step off the plane, after which I'm taking about two minutes away from the plane and put in an office. They say to me, are you aware that impersonating a doctor is a serious offense? I then ask what this is all about, and I am told that the cabin crew called ahead to say that a medical student impersonating a doctor was treating a patient on board the aircraft. They ask for my ID and any documentation that I can provide to prove that yes, I am a doctor, which is a slight problem. While I can provide my registration number, which every doctor in my country has one, and it can be looked up by an individual registry online. My passport, my wallet, my ID, everything is in my carry-on bag under my fiancé's seat. One officer steps out to talk to someone, and I assume they're going to get my carry-on off the plane, while the other officer continues to talk to me. I later found out that the nurse who helped me vaguely recognized me from somewhere. I had been on placement at her hospital as a medical student the year before, and she told the flight attendant that she thought I was a medical student, rather than talk to me 
me about it, they assumed the nurse was right. Remember, I am 30 years old and I look like it. And they then took the steps to separate me from the patient. I was so focused on the patient that I never noticed the change in body language from the cabin crew or really took notice of the oddity of asking me back to my seat. Then again later, they lied to me to get me to exit the plane quietly. The officer who had stepped out came back after what felt like an hour or so and through police magic was somehow able to verify who I was and that I was actually a doctor, which is really good. I was halfway doubting myself for a minute there, but they hadn't thought to speak to the airline about all of my belongings. They let me go and take me back to where the plane was. The only problem was that the plane wasn't there. They had refueled and taken off again. So now I'm stuck in an airport on the wrong side of passport control without any form of identification, no home key, no money, no phone, nothing. I hadn't even been able to speak to my then fiance or any of my friends. So they had no idea what was going on. I had just vanished from their perspective and no one would answer their questions throughout the entire flight or even after they landed. The airline I was flying with also had the gall to try and deny any wrongdoing. They refused to transfer me to another flight as I was asked to leave the plane so I must have been in the wrong. And so they did not want a disruptive passenger on board one of their aircrafts. And oh yeah, I had no passport with me. As far as they were concerned, I should just go away and leave them well alone. They even tried to prevent me from using their phone to call somebody for help. I ended up having to borrow the phone of one of the now very helpful police officers just to call my now father-in-law to come and pick me up. I had to stay with them for a week without any clothes or toiletries until my wife got back with all my stuff because I didn't have a key to get into my apartment. Thankfully, I managed to contact her after she landed so she at least knew that I was safe, but she stayed with our friends and enjoyed her holiday. No sense in both of us being stuck at home. They even tagged me in all of the photos of them over there. In the end, I managed to win a claim through small claims court, but it took an awfully long time to process. I got my money back with a small amount of damages. Throughout the entire experience, despite witness statements from other passengers, the airline still adamantly refused to admit that they had done anything wrong. There is still ongoing litigation, which I am oh so looking forward to, so I will not be directly naming the airline that is totally not easy to find with a quick Google search. Nowadays, I try to get some alcohol in my system as soon as possible once I board a plane so that I could refuse to assist due to being impaired. Also, I'll never fly that airline ever again. That is honestly insane to me. The cabin crew, as well as everybody who said this guy isn't a doctor, are absolute morons. Like, seriously, you have a patient here who is obviously sick and could seriously be injured if they don't get the help they need. Who in their right mind would volunteer and be like, um, I'm a doctor, bring me up there. Like, no, no one's going to actually do that. And the fact that they thought this guy was faking it simply because of his age is honestly disgusting. The original poster goes on to say that he eventually settled in court with a much heftier lawsuit that forced this airline to write a written apology to him, which is something he wanted from the beginning. I mean, just think about the circumstances that they put this guy in. He was stuck at the airport with none of his belongings. All of his stuff, even his passport, all of it was taken away from him. And the cabin crew even lied to him just to get him off the plane. And then they bounce out of there after refueling the plane. I mean, this is seriously crazy to me. And this shows a distinct lack of customer service that is seriously just mind boggling to me. And the guy who was sick even had a full recovery. And he was really happy that this guy was there to help him out. Also, that nurse was a complete jerk as well. She literally just assumed, oh, it's clearly a medical student. Like, didn't you think for a second that maybe he graduated? Maybe he became an actual full-fledged doctor and that's why he came up to the front of the plane? Like, you literally threw him under the bus for no reason. But overall, I am so glad this worked out in the original poster's favor because the way he was treated was honestly so disgusting and he deserved every kind of apology and settlement that this airline could possibly give him. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My manager tried to convince me to lie to the Department of Labor just to try and hide all the shady things they've been doing at the restaurant I work at. But instead, I decided to tell the truth. And now I'm not sure if my job is on the line. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So the restaurant I work at is currently being investigated by the Department of Labor due to an employee who recently left filing a complaint of unpaid wages. Management asked me to lie about some things, but I told the truth. I just want to make sure I didn't break some unwritten code of restaurants 
else by telling the Department of Labor the truth. Now, this employee is a very hard worker, dedicated a lot to the restaurant, and brought a lot of sales through their talent and their customer service skills. They were pretty vocal about how unhappy they were with management and their labor practices. I and the rest of the staff know that management do some shady things, especially when it comes to our pay and our tips. But at the time I got hired, I desperately needed a job that would allow me to focus on school while also paying my rent. So I was willing to overlook it just to make ends meet. For some background about the restaurant, it is small and it's family owned. And we've been understaffed for the past five months. While it is the type of restaurant to have a chill vibe, both myself and the employee were doing the work of two people during our shifts since it would only be us taking care of things. Rarely would we actually get breaks since we would have to work through them. And yet we would still have to clock out for them. Now, I'm not sure if I would still get paid for the 30 minutes to an hour that I would be clocked out for, but I always felt like my paychecks didn't reflect the hours that I worked. Management also does mess things up and does illegal things with our tips and overtime pay. But I was so focused on school this past semester, I did not have the energy to bring it up. Before my interview with the investigator, management asked me to lie about the number of staff that worked here, and if asked, I should conceal specific employees. But you know what? I told the investigator the truth. If management is underpaying the former employee, they are also probably underpaying everybody, especially the employee they specifically asked me to lie about. I know the information I give to the investigator is supposed to be confidential, but I totally forgot that the cameras have audio and that management probably knows everything I said. Since I had a very off-putting conversation with my manager since the interview, I don't care about getting a big paycheck. I just don't want to be involved in any wage or labor violations, especially towards these specific employees I was asked to conceal. We are in a very high cost of living area, and I find it so messed up that they are messing with our pay when things are so tough out here. Does anyone have any advice on how to navigate this situation? I am looking for a new job, but I'm not able to quit right away. What should I do? You did the right thing by telling the truth. First off, you need to understand you don't owe your boss anything. They literally asked you to lie to the Department of Labor. Like seriously, these people are sketchy. And it's really funny that it's a small family owned business because from my experience, that is typically where this stuff happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at like large chains or anything like that. But from my own personal experience, it kind of relates to what you've been through. And that's not fair at all. You are literally just trying to make ends meet. And these people are trying to save face and asking you to lie for them. And it's probably smart that you get another job because the owner of this restaurant absolutely does not care about your well-being. Instead, they would try to convince you to commit a federal crime by lying to a federal agency or department. Like seriously, these people suck and you deserve so much better out of an employer. So hopefully you're able to find something fast because these people that you work for are super sketchy and they absolutely deserve what's about to come their way. Am I the jerk for wanting to sell my house and move into a place of my own and this all being without my boyfriend who is dragging his feet on proposing and potentially buying a place with me of our own? Here's what happened. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for almost two years. We have been talking about getting engaged for months now and started to look for a place together. He has constantly been telling me that he's going to propose and even got me to look at engagement rings together and has been saying he's going to talk to my dad to ask for my hand in marriage for months now. The issue that we're facing is my parents are super traditional and don't agree with us living together before marriage. I know we're both adults and can do whatever we want to do, but we don't want to lose their respect. So my boyfriend said he would talk to my dad and ask him for my hand in marriage and also talk to him about us moving in together once we're engaged and closer to our wedding date. We had a family barbecue yesterday with both my boyfriend's parents and my parents. And my boyfriend said he would talk to my dad then. Well, guess what? He didn't. I asked him afterwards why he didn't talk to him because he had lots of opportunities and he basically said he'll ask him another time and that he's not in a rush and told me to be patient. It's confusing because he's the one who brought it up and told me that he was going to talk to him so we can figure out our living situation. I then asked him if he's having second thoughts or is getting scared, but all he says is it's going to be soon. Please be patient. He is always talking about our future and proposing soon or whatever that means and making me look at houses and rings, but isn't taking the steps to make it happen. And I'm getting tired of it. I'm frustrated because I desperately want to get out of my living situation. And we've been looking at houses for a while now. And this is just delaying everything. And it's pretty frustrating not having any control in any of this. I hate my house that I currently own. I bought it off my grandparents after 
my grandfather passed away and it's just old with a lot of issues in a really bad area and I've just had a lot of bad memories in it. I've communicated this to him many times and he knows that living in it is making me very depressed and I just want out no matter what the cost. I stay at my boyfriend's for the majority of the time but his apartment is so small so I can't have any of my stuff there and he won't give me a key to his place. I'm just going back and forth every single day and I'm exhausted of this lifestyle. He won't give me a key because his mom has the spare and he doesn't want to ask her for it which doesn't make any sense. He's also been telling me that he'll be giving me a key soon for months. I have been super patient but I'm getting really frustrated now and I'm starting to resent him for the way he's delaying things. I thought about this and I've waited too long for him to make a decision and I don't think he'll be ready for a while so I'm just going to sell my current house and buy another one but I feel like I would be a jerk if I didn't include him in it as well as for not buying a home together. What should I do? I mean if you want to sell your house and buy a new one that is absolutely your prerogative. Like you have every right to buy whatever you want to buy especially if your boyfriend is sitting there not doing any of the things that he said he was going to do. Like seriously that is so annoying and it's pretty obvious that he is having second thoughts. Like seriously that's what I think is going on at least. It seems like he really is being faced with the reality of getting married and it's kind of freaking him out and that's why he's dragging his feet. So I don't think you would be the jerk for getting your own house. You clearly don't like the one you're living in right now and you would much rather live literally anywhere else. So getting out of there as soon as possible in my opinion wouldn't be a bad idea. And sure he might have some kind of objection to you selling your house but then again if he really wanted to be involved in this process he would have been kicking things into overdrive and getting things going. And it's also the case where he could live in this house with you as well. It would just be under your name specifically. So in my opinion if you do decide to sell your house and buy a new one I don't think that makes you the jerk because your boyfriend is being very slow about all of this and I don't blame you for trying to get out of the house that you're currently living in. Would I be the jerk if I reported the delivery driver who keeps showing up at my door in the middle of the night? Here's what's happening. So around the end of last year one of the local fast food places started doing deliveries and I decided to take advantage of the convenience. Because I live in a small town most of the time it was the same delivery guy. We'll call him John. That's not his real name. And it would usually be him bringing me my food. And to begin with, it was fine. I would smile, I would say hello, say thank you so much, and then I would take my food. In October, I got COVID. It wasn't too bad, but my voice was destroyed from coughing, and in the weeks afterwards, I sounded pretty awful. I guess something about me being sick made John decide I wasn't okay in general, because he got a lot more chatty after that, always asking how I was, telling me he cared about me. It was awkward, but I figured he was just being nice. Anyways, mid-November rolls around, and he showed up at my door at almost 3 in the morning. I'm a night owl by nature so I was still up and there he was, visibly drunk, kind of swaying in place, going on about how he had been walking home and saw my lights on as he was passing and decided to stop by and chat. Now I am a very anxious person. I'm non-confrontational by nature so with this strange man at my door the last thing I wanted to do was antagonize him so I just smiled, nodded along with what he was saying and tried to get him to leave. He asked to come inside and I did shut that down pretty quickly. But otherwise, I don't think I was very firm in asserting my boundaries. He left after a few minutes, didn't get angry or scary or anything like that. But he did leave me pretty shaken up. I stopped ordering from that restaurant and I didn't see him again until two months later when he appeared again at two in the morning. This time, I was in bed reading and I chose not to engage. I could hear him calling out, asking if I was awake and if I was okay. Then he he left, muttering something to himself. It's been four months since then and I had let myself believe that it was all fine and that he decided to stop bothering me. But that is not what happened. Tonight at 11.30 p.m., I heard noises outside. This guy was back, slamming the doorbell, calling out to me specifically. I spoke to him through the door, told him that it wasn't okay to keep showing up and that if it happened again, I would be calling the police. He just kept repeating that it was fine and then eventually he left. Now, a few hours later, I'm still sitting up, wondering if I should do something this time. I'm not worried about him in the sense that I feel like I'm in danger. He's never actually done anything, but it makes me anxious wondering if he's going to show up again. And I'm so incredibly angry that he has the audacity to think this kind of behavior is okay. I don't want to make things hard for him and potentially cost him his job if I report him to his workplace. And until tonight, I wasn't super clear in telling him to leave me alone, but I feel like I shouldn't have to explain
saying that knocking on a woman's door late at night when she's not expecting you is a bad thing. And after three times, I can't just ignore this anymore. What should I do? Seriously, after the first time this happened, I would have called the police right then and there. I don't care who it is. No one's going to show up at my door at three o'clock in the morning, swaying around, ringing the doorbell, knocking on my door, just trying to talk. I don't think so. You're not going to come in. I'm not going to entertain that in the slightest. I'm going to call the police and have them deal with that. I don't care if this guy's the nicest guy on planet Earth. He is clearly sketchy and he obviously has nefarious intentions if he's showing up at your house at three in the morning. I mean, this guy is showing up unannounced to your house at all hours of the night. I mean, I don't care who you are. That's creepy regardless. He clearly has other intentions and I would not put up with that for a second. Forget how he feels. How do you feel? Because if I was in your shoes, I would feel very much in danger. I would feel just like you, incredibly angry and upset that this guy's showing up in my house at all hours of the night. There is no way you should let this slide in my opinion and you absolutely need to do something about this, whether it's reporting him to the police or reporting him to his job. Both of them probably need to know that one of their delivery drivers is acting like this. I would also set up some kind of like camera system in your house so you can have video evidence of this guy being an absolute weirdo. But hopefully this all works out for you because the way this guy is acting is absolutely inappropriate and you should not let that slide in the slightest, regardless of whatever consequences he might face. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.